allow me to introduce to you the game engine with one of the world's most ergonomic data-driven entity component systems. It's called Bevy. This game engine is highly robust and capable. I made everything from a Flappy Bird clone to a voxel engine to now working on a tower defense typing game, all powered by Bevy. This game engine was released just about 3 years ago. And while there are gaps here and there when it comes to engine features, I believe one day Bevy will stand among the industry adopted game engines and truly shine. Before we board the Bevy ship, it would be nice to know if the captain knows where we're heading. So let's start with the creator of this game engine. Cart. Aye aye, Captain. Raise the sails. Where are we heading, Captain Cart? The moon? Okay. Uh, 2020, he made a post outlining the core philosophies of this game engine. Why does this game engine exist? What is it trying to solve? Even though this post is a few years old, it still stands today. So, let's break it down. Free and open source. Why build up ecosystems of closed source monopolies that takes cuts of our sales and deny us visibility into the tech we use daily? Well, turns out that's a good criteria, considering the disastrous Unity installation fee debacle. So, check on that. Productive. The main point here is about compile times, which unfortunately is not the best. It could be a lot better, but I am willing to live with it because productivity doesn't have to be only about compile times. I personally find Bevy to be a very productive API to work with. There's no boilerplate, it is super modular, and guess what, compared to any other game engine I've ever used, runtime crashes is a rarity writing Bevy code. That is because Bevy is written in the Rust programming language, the best programming language in the world! Hunting down runtime errors could be a huge productivity killer. Now don't get me wrong, you will still stumble upon runtime crashes in Bevy, but it will not be a daily occurrence. So yes, I would say Bevy is productive, check on that. Now this next point is mind-blowingly amazing. Ideally, the game engine is written in the same language as the games are. Being able to run an IDE and go to definition on a symbol in your game and hop directly into the engine source code is an extremely powerful concept. I can confirm that, I do that daily. A side effect of making a game in Bevy is that you will actually be able to understand the source code of the game engine. Game engine code works the same as game code. This is mainly thanks to a Bevy feature called plugins. For example, in my tower defense game I needed health bars. So I made a health bar plugin. All the logic and data types that deals with health bars goes into this plugin I made. Let's say I don't want health bars anymore, well I could just remove this plugin. At a first glance, this might just seem like a nice tool that give us to structure the gameplay code, but SURPRISE! Every single area of the game engine features are developed using plugins. The way you write game code is exactly how you write game engine code. That's absolutely insane! If you haven't had an epiphany yet as to why why this is incredible, let me cook. Suppose you made a particle system. Fun fact, Bevy does not have a particle system currently. Well, someone actually did make a particle system called Bevy Hanabi. Suppose they want to integrate the particle system now into the Bevy game engine. Well, they could simply integrate Bevy Hanabi into the core game engine. Just, just copy paste and it will work. It will be in the game engine. Of course, anything that goes into the game engine is heavily examined. But the fact that you use the same architecture for engine and game code enables so much collaboration and freedom. I suppose there's parts of the game engine you don't want to use. Well, because of plugins, you can simply disable parts of the game engine. This game Tiny Glade is absolutely stunning. They use a custom engine with their own rendering solution, but they actually integrate Bevy, only taking the entity component parts. If all game engines could implement this point, the world would be so much brighter. Next point, simple. It needs to be easy to use for common tasks, but it also can't hide details from you. Many game engines are either easy to use but too high level or very low level but difficult to do common tasks in. Correct! The Bevy API is very ergonomic and easy to use yet very powerful. Now the syntax of Bevy might look intimidating if you look on some more advanced code but with experience I found that it is very easy to understand other people's code even if what they're doing is pretty complex. Simple but powerful. Check. Editor. It needs to have an optional graphical editor. And here, Cart points out that the editor must be built using the same technology as the game engine. Because this would ensure improvements to the editor would also yield improvements to the core engine. Bevy does not have an editor at the moment. I definitely see a big need for it. Especially to gain wide adoption, this is a big deal breaker for many people. I am actually fine not having an editor at the moment because the core Bevy ECS technology is so incredibly powerful that I find gameplay programming is both fun and productive. We'll hopefully have an editor within a year or two, so let them cook. Data driven. Well, yes, Bevy is blazingly fast. Play 
frantically fast! And by default, all your code is multi-threaded without you having to write any multi-threading code. That is absolutely mad. Of course, Bevy uses a data-driven entity component system, which not only is more performant than object-oriented ECS systems, I find it to be so much more modular and extendable. There's a reason Unity is making a Unity dot. Data-driven is superior. <laughs> Let's go. Those are the core philosophies of the Bevy game engine, and I absolutely love it. Now, the community around Bevy is also pretty strong. Of course, it's not as big as Unity, Godot, or Unreal, but the Discord channel is very active, and if you go to the showcase, area, you will find about anything you can imagine being built with Bevy. By now you probably know if Bevy is something you would like to try out, so the rest of this video I'm gonna break down the best tools for learning Bevy. Step 1. Learn Rust. Bevy is written in Rust, and you write Rust code. I mean, that should be self-explanatory. Become familiar with Rust, get some command line programs under your belt, and then it is time to learn Bevy. The best place to start is the official website, bevyengine.org. The first thing you should do is to read through the Bevy book to learn the basics. Then after that you can choose your own adventure. Bevy has a bunch of example code that runs in the browser. You can check out the source code here in the browser, but all of this example code you will also find in the GitHub repository. If you go to assets you can find a bunch of open source games made with Bevy, but most importantly you will find libraries built for Bevy. We're talking everything from camera management to tweening libraries, there are some really useful libraries in here. Of course you can also find many good Bevy tutorials on YouTube. If you're new this might be one of the best options. One of the most important resource you will need is the Bevy documentation. All the features of the game engine is explained in the documentation, so always have that open. Now here are some personal recommendations. Make a tiny game with a complete game loop. Make a Flappy Bird clone, make a Pong clone. By making a complete game with states, UI, gameplay, it is inevitable that you will do things the hard way. But that doesn't have to be a bad thing. You have to accept that the first Bevy game you make isn't going to be the most architecturally sound. Why don't we roast my first Bevy game? When I first made this Flappy Bevy clone, it didn't occur to me that Bevy has a state management system. So guess what? I made my own, and it is pretty bad. I even put this game state in a struct called game data, where I also stored the score. Well, in Bevy, we don't have to make massive structs to hold all game data. That's the job of resources. It would make so much more sense if the score was its own separate resource because it has nothing to do with the game state. I also wrote a super inconvenient system for handling the game over state. When I detect that the player is out of bounds, I would call this function trigger death. And this function does way too much, it basically resets the entire game state. And worst of all, I even hard-coded the deletion of every single thing that is in the game state. I mean, all of this code works, but it is not easy to work with. The way I would write this code today would look something like this. Instead of calling a function that resets the world state, all we do is tell Bevy to change the state to game over. The reset logic should be somewhere else. Instead of having to query all different types of things in the world to despawn, we could make a component called onState. This component tells us what state this entity belongs to. Then we can make a system that detects when a state change occurs, we will despawn all entities that does not belong to this new game state. Now any entity we want to live on a specific state and be deleted when we leave that state, we simply add this component when we spawn that entity. Now this probably went over your head if you've never written Bevy code before, but the point I want to make is don't worry about writing perfect Bevy code at the start. If it works, I'm happy for you. You will come to discover absolutely wonderful features in Bevy naturally over time. But start today, the best way of learning is to write code. I don't promise it will be easy, but you are a programmer. And we all know programmers do not give up easily, if you have the passion for it. So, good luck! Bevy, Bevy, Bevy. <laughs>